guys, Jessica Henry here. Just wanted to say welcome and um, hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday morning. Um, I am going to be working today on a fun little project. I thought that it'd be fun to share this with you. Um, what I'm going to be doing is just doing a quick little watercolor. Uh, you know what? Uh, I don't know that this is picking up reception. Um, oh, no, it is. <laughs> Thanks guys. I always wonder because sometimes I've done this and I've had it like to only me. But all right. So anyway, I just wanted to say welcome. I hope you guys are having a fabulous Friday or at least have a good Friday planned. Um, I'm just uh, wanted to tell you real quick um, while everybody joins on. Good to see you guys. I have a bright window here, so it's it, it's a little bit um, kind of washed out, but that's okay. Um, anyway, hi guys. Good to see you. I am going to talk to you first about art supplies and materials that you need for doing watercolor painting. Um, morning, guys. Um, okay, so to begin with, uh, I did suggest yesterday, if you guys wanted to join with, that you could um, print out the picture that I took of our little hamster. And um, so if you're ready, this is what I have going on today. So I have a board, just a quarter inch, um, this is just plywood. And um, good morning, guys. So I have taped down to here. This is cold pressed watercolor paper, 140 pound, and um, I've, I'm using artist tape. And I have used other stuff before in the past. Thanks, Bill. Good to see you. Um, I've used other tape in the past, uh, masking tape and so forth, but um, then after I finish the painting and I peel the tape off, it has occasionally ripped the painting. That makes me really frustrated. So um, I do cave and buy a little bit more expensive, pricier artist tape because when you peel it off, the painting stays in place, which is really nice. <laughs> okay, so going over my supplies here real quick. So I have um, the board and then I've taped to it. I did two here today for my demo. I'm going to show you how I do washes. And I've done this one already yesterday just to kind of um, show you a little bit of what I mean by doing washes and practicing and so forth. So we'll get to this in just a sec. And um, then for paints, I I always suggest to people, um, oh, thank you guys. I'm missing all your comments, but I'll get to them later. Uh, when I teach watercolor, I always tell students, adults and children alike, if you just get the Prang brand watercolor paints, and they have to be Prang, they can't be anything else, um, the, uh, it's professional grade. I know a lot of professional artists who will just grab those quick. Um, I have worked over the years, though, and kind of collected my little tray here. I like to work from a tray because I like the bigger mixing surface area of these things. So... Um, even though I think that the quality of these Windsor Newton is the same as praying, but so anyway, I do like these, and this is what I have. You can just pick these up at any art supply store. It has the little thumb holder in case you want to go out and um, you know hold it like such. I have also, uh, in the course of teaching, I've taken a black sharpie and just written down what the names of these paints are, just because it helps people to be able to um, identify what colors did you use to mix those and so forth. So. I have today, I'm pretty much just going to use uh, Cad Yellow Medium. This is pretty much the same palette colors that I use in my oil paintings too. It's Cad Yellow Medium, Yellow Ochre. I may use the smallest trace of um, Alizarin Crimson. I have Burnt Sienna. I won't be using the Cad's Reds or the Scarlets. Um, I probably won't be using Burnt Umber either. Uh, on this side then, I have Ivory Black. Not going to use that. Daxonine Purple. I might play with that, but it's not... It's not essential. I have indigo, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, thalo green. So I'm going to use mostly just ultramarine blue today with um, burnt sienna. Just basically the same colors I used in my oil painting palette. So that's that. And these are the tubes. You can buy these. Um, you know, they range in price from a few dollars to, I don't know, five or six, whatever. So I'm going to set those aside. And then I have two water containers. This one is the one I bring with when I go plein air painting because it squashes down. Pretty cool. And I have a clean cup, <laughs> not to be confused with my coffee over there too, um, which I've drank several times after um, anointing it with watercolor paint. <laughs> hey, they're non-toxic, so I'm still fine. Um, all right, so two cups of water. So one is for cleaning your brush and the other is for actually dipping into and, and mixing with my paints. That's a good practice, doesn't mean I always do it. I do have a little dish of salt here. I just want to show you a quick technique. I, I don't 
plan. I don't think I'm going to use it in this painting. You never know as the spirit leads what I might want to do with salt. So I keep it handy. Um, brushes. In the past, I have bought the very expensive Kalinsky sables and had them stolen from me. But um, regardless, I do plan on buying them again at some point in the future. But I have I have this one, and I, I don't know how I inherited this brush. It's, it's like a long oil painting one, but it is um, it is a Kalinsky sable. It says so, so I believe it. And I will be using this today. What I like about it and why these are favorable is because they hold a really sharp point. Can you see that? And um, they hold a sharp point when you get it wet, and they also hold a lot of water and pigment inside the hairs when you're working. Okay, so what happens then with um, the cheap synthetic ones, which I have those too, <laughs> they don't hold as much uh, paint and pigment in here because essentially these are just plastic. And, um, and, but they do hold a point, and so, you know, in a pinch, I don't mind, I don't mind working with these. And I have some teeny tiny ones uh, here, also the, of the Walmart variety. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with these itty bitty teeny ones later because I told you that I was going to show you how I pen and ink and I do have my lovely little pen and ink station here. Um, I found this at an antique store and it has the little capsule, the little ceramic thing for my ink. Love this, but, um, and I have some ink in there and I have my pen tips. Um, you can buy these separate. The pen tips just pull out and you slide these in as such, like that. And um, I like these, they're very cold and, they, and it just feels like um, like some old wizard writing with these when you're using them. However, they're unpredictable when, they, when, the ink, when you're inking. Um, I just wanna show you this real quick before I get into what I'm gonna do with this. So that you get these little pen tip nib holder things and they're so cute and charming, how adorable is that? And then um, you get the different sizes of nibs. These are called nibs. You can buy these separately. There's calligraphy. There's and just if you want to get these, just get the ones for drawing. Um, I'll talk. I'll talk a little bit more about pen and inking when I get there. But um, anyway, so that's that's that. What I'm going to do today, though, instead of doing the pen and ink, is when I do inking on my paintings, and I'll show you some examples over here. I hardly ever use those anymore, and I'll just do teeny teeny little paintbrushes to do my inking and no one's the wiser. I like these better too because I can I can handle and control these without the ink. I've done um, really delicate little ink drawings and the ink goes all over my painting, all over a face. You can't erase it, so um, I find I can control these better and I can adjust the color of the ink easier with these when I just paint it on. Um, okay, so then I also have some big mop brushes for doing backgrounds. Again, synthetic. I think this is some sort of squirrel synthetic combination. Anyway, I'm sure you guys have all seen these in the art stores. Just grab a few. Um, I used to tell my students to bring a roll of toilet paper to class and they would always laugh and giggle and wonder why. <laughs> um, now I just use a, a natural sponge. It's a little bit easier to, to transport and, and it causes less questions. So it's whatever. Natural sponge. Uh, you can use a paper towel, whatever you need. Uh, that's for wiping our brush off in between painting. Okay. Um, other miscellaneous tools I have, I drew on our little hamster here on the watercolor paper earlier today. And I like to do this to my pencils um, where I shave off most of the lead a couple inches from the end. And I do this, and this is just a regular school pencil. Um, my kids ran, all ran off with my fancy drawing pencils, so I stole one of theirs. <laughs> so I shave it down, and then... Um, I like, I, I use one of these, it looks like a little garbage can, shove the pencil lead in there, and then you twirl it around and around and around and around like this, okay? And it, it makes it sharp like a razor point, or I guess a needle. And I like that because I like the long lead because it teaches me to press very lightly and delicately, and um, especially in watercolor, that's really important to um, keep a very light touch because you don't want to see a lot of your pencil marks, unless it's kind of part of your technique and style. But for me, when I do these illustrations, I want to just see the painting and then I'll do the inking afterwards. So that's my pencil. Um, don't use these erasers on your watercolor paper. The surface of your paper is very sensitive. You can get um, the surface ripped and torn if you erase too hard. So use uh, either a kneaded eraser if you have these, it's very therapeutic. Um, I also use some of these it's just very, very lightly 
and um, this is just the old rubber gum erasers. You can just use those too. But just, you know, another thing about the surface of your paper is try not to touch it too much. Your hands have oils in them, and even if you wash them and dry them really well, you can, over time, you know, get, uh, what am I saying? Corrupt the integrity of the surface of the paper. Whoo! That was a mental gymnastics there. All right, so moving my stuff over. I'm going to talk to you for a minute then since we're talking about paper. I'm going to get into that a little bit. Oh, if you're right-handed, put everything on your right-hand side. There's no point in reaching over yourself to do your painting. So keep, keep your work area as, um, you know, like uh, feng shui where it just kind of makes sense, you know. So... All right, so like I said at the beginning, have your paper taped to your board. Um, I do have an extra one here, but I changed my mind and decided not to work on a little one like that, and I wanted a different surface quality. So this one is cold-pressed. This is Arches cold-pressed. Different brands have different texture. And by cold-pressed, it's just a process in how they do it. Um, I could go into all that, but let's just get on with it. Um, that's cold-pressed. That's 140 pounds, and it's, it's a nice heavier weight watercolor paper. Um, this is, you can kind of get a feel for that. That's 140 pounds. I wouldn't go any lighter than that, like 90 pounds for watercolor paper because it starts to buckle while you're working. I prefer 300 pound hot pressed. Let me show you, I'll, I'll show you the difference here. This is the cold pressed. And I was just fiddling around with some of these goldfish yesterday. You can see the, the surface texture on, on that. Okay, cold pressed is rough. Okay, and then um, when I'm doing finer illustrations like this where I know there's going to be delicate fur and, and just teeny little details, I like hot pressed. And these blocks of, these are called blocks of watercolor paper. You can buy these at the art store. They're kind of pricey, but um, it's worth it because you just have everything here. I want to show you two here. This is hot pressed, and you can kind of see the surface now. See how I put some of this paint here? You don't see any of that um, tooth, that, that rough um, tooth. So it's very smooth. Now, if you can kind of see, I took the tape. See, I, I taped off this picture here uh, right along the edge. And then today, I peeled it off just to see how the, the borders work. And I don't know if you can see that. I did not use mask, uh, fancy artist tape on this. I just used uh, regular masking tape, and I'm very disappointed because you can kind of see, maybe you can't, it roughed the texture there and kind of ruined it. I can still frame this picture if I want, Just I just have to have the, the mat come right up next to the painting. So, whatever, that's that. All right, so that is, that's in a nutshell on watercolor paper. Um, in my preference, I use this. You can also buy for watercolor painting and illustration, illustration board. Um, there's different brands, Canson, um, Strathmore, whatever they make, the illustration board, which is almost like thick cardboard, and you can do beautiful watercolor illustrations on those too. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit, some people say, well, what is Victorian watercolor? Why is it different than uh, regular watercolor? And so what I have here is, um, when I've taught this over the years, I have found and developed a method of teaching watercolors that is very, very simple. Um, it is, it's just, you work in layers, and I find, I'll burnish the paper with the back of a spoon. <laughs> I, I haven't done that. Um, I actually just kind of jump right in. I know some people will take their, their watercolor paper and soak it in water, let it air dry, because they say that there's a layer of glue on it, or, or some sort of um, covers, whatever, on the paper, and I've, I've actually never experienced that, but um, there's just different things you can do. Uh, so anyway, Victorian watercolor. To give you examples, everybody knows Beatrix Potter, um, yeah, Blanche Fisher Wright did the Mother Goose illustrations, um, Cecilia Mary Barker did the Flower Fairies, that kind of method. And while I love, kill for right, oh, tape pulling, right, right, okay, that's good, thank you, Richard, that's a good advice. Um, so what I do with when I'm teaching is, is I start with just a super flat, simple wash. If you can master the flat wash, there isn't anything you can't paint, watercolor paint. It's once you learn um, starting from the background, working to the foreground, lightest light, then the next, then the next, then the next, and you leave what needs to be light, um, you just leave it the white of the paper, then it, it makes it so much easier to go forward from there. So, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. 
uh, in, in, um, in case you don't know, we are starting up a Renaissance Academy of Fine Arts online and we're, we're starting to finalize the details. Look for us in April. We're going to be launching this academy. And one of the foundational things that I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited to get started on this. So I'm going to start with basic drawing, moving into then watercolor, because I believe that that transition in our mind is just makes so much logical sense. Um, so I'm going to be talking about drawing, and that's what I am showing you here too. These are some Victorian watercolors I've done in the past, and with these I drew them all from my mind, and they're from an illustration, a book that I didn't actually publish, but um, I wanted to show you them anyway. This this is what is considered Victorian watercolor. So I drew these, and um, then I worked in layers, starting with the background. I figured, okay, the fence is going to be white. I'm going to leave it the white of the paper. Um, the doggy's white, that's the white of the paper. Okay, So then you just build in layers and layers and layers, working from there. And then at the end, I do the inking over it. Some people do the inking first, and I prefer not to because there's different brands of ink that can bleed, and you, you don't want it, the disaster of doing a beautiful drawing, doing a beautiful ink, and then painting over it, and then finding that the ink is going to go all over. So don't do that. <laughs> I know it. It's not my practice. Um, different drawings. I'll show you. So with the Renaissance Academy of Fine Arts, I am going to be, hi, Helen. I'm going to be talking about how to do these drawings, how to first learn how to draw from life and um, practice just measuring and seeing more accurately. And in return, that'll speed up your drawing and also enhance your ability to draw from your memory and um, that, that fantasy art sort of thing. Um, anatomy. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, different, different things like, uh, how do you make a mermaid? <laughs> things like that. So, um, Anyway, these are all considered Victorian watercolor. Building up your darks, we're going to address that. And then I painted white streaks here. Um, I did that with acrylic. So some purists do not use any sort of Chinese white or acrylic paint over their painting afterwards. I don't mind a little bit of that. I think that Arthur Rackham and um, some of these Victorian greats did that. So psh, I'm going to... But, um, for example, in a situation like this whale, I would never just paint that white on a watercolor. That is the white of the paper with subtle tones of mauves and peaches and whatever. Um, okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole pile. Uh, but, yeah, eventually then we'll move into bigger pictures like this, where they're more elaborate, rich, darker colors. Um, we're obviously concentrating on composition and telling a story. Okay. So, oh, by the way, if you guys don't want to see the comments, just swipe them off to your right. Okay, so I'm not going to use that smaller watercolor block. I'm anxious to get started on this. Oh, another tool I have, I have over here my blow dryer. Um, and you'll see in parts of this where I use it because I want to kind of speed it up. If I was just at home, I, I wouldn't worry about blow drying my painting um, because I just go get another cup of coffee and relax. So, all right, so these watercolor blocks have sort of um, this around the edge it's they're all secured so I take my little um, where'd my thing go I have this itty bitty teeny little exacto knife and I just slide it into this little slit right here and I separate this layer this one painting okay so I get rid of that and I am all set to begin my um, drawing. If you guys are just uh, joining, if you are this far, just wait. We're going to set this aside for now. And um, I want to talk about doing watercolor washes. When am I going to set this? I'm running out of space. Okay, so watercolor washes are the heart and soul of painting watercolors. If you can't, if you don't master this, you, you, you won't be able to go beyond because these are like the scales on a piano. In practicing your scales, get good at these and then the rest is, is easy, easy sailing. All right, so I'm getting my little station here set up. What I did, and you guys can do this um, at your own time, is I, I drew little squares yesterday and then I'm going to show you how I do the washes inside these. I'm not going to do this many over here, but I do want to show you a couple of different techniques. How to do gradation like this. Like this, um, this is burnt sienna and I just, I did it lighter like that. And then um, how to get pure bright colors, how to get darks. And then in some of these, this is a salt technique. Okay, 
And I'll show you how I do that, if you can kind of see that a little bit. I've got two cameras going here, so forgive me. <laughs> um, hold on, okay. So, and okay, so I'm gonna get into that. So, let me just kind of build up my thing here. What I like to do is when I'm painting, I hold this up so that I can um, do it. Uh, washes, water goes downhill, so I always hold these up. All right, so I am just gonna use my, let's use this water. And I've got my little sponge over here. Let's see if I get on. Can't, okay, I think, you know what? I was going to drop this down. So I won't be able to see your comments, but at least you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so here is my paper and my water. I'm going to flip this over so that this is over here on this side so that you can see it better. All right, so I start with a nice big wash. Here, oh, I want to activate all my colors too before I get going. To activate them, these are all dried in their little pans. I just put water in each color, just like that. You can see what I'm doing there. And that just kind of wakes them up. You can do the same thing if you're using the praying watercolors. Just wake them up. Okay, so I get a nice big juicy puddle here. Just going to use blue. To begin with, this is my ultramarine blue. Now, can you see the brush? It's just loaded with paint and, and it's got like a little, um, where'd, where'd it go? There's a little drip right at the beginning. So I'm going to draw my line across the top of my square. If you can see that, I will hold this over here. And then we're going to drag the puddle down. Just drag it down like that. And can you see how I'm, there's a little puddle at the end down here. Okay, can you see the puddle at the bottom? I'm going to rinse my brush off, dry it off on my sponge very well, or paper towel, toilet paper. And now my brush is fairly dry. I'm going to go right along the bottom and suck up that puddle. Okay, so now it's gone. And that is a perfect flat wash. Okay. Let's do it again. I'm going to use, I'm going to add a little bit of phthalo green to that just so you can see a little bit of a difference. Nice big juicy brush full of paint. Draw your line across the top and drag the puddle down. Now um, there's a couple of things I did not do in the course of this wash. I did not lay my board down flat. Don't want to do that. And once I was up there, I'm not going to go back up there again. You don't want to go up there and, oh, I missed a spot, and, and smudgy it around. You want to just leave it fresh and leave it clean. Okay? So that's that. Let's um, make another puddle. I'm going to add some alizarin crimson to this. If you don't know your color wheel and what colors are complementary and which colors are opposite, you know, opposites and how to get different colors, I would encourage you to um, study that. Or, you know, if that's something where you're just not familiar about um, color handling, log into what we're doing with Renaissance Creative Arts. Next month, we're going to be starting the Online Art Academy, and we're figuring out the platform on which to do that and how to create members and so forth. Um, so I'm going to be going through over all those basics in great detail. Okay, so in case you're just joining, what we're doing is a nice flat wash learning how to master the flat wash. What I'm going to do down here is show you how to gradate. Okay, so let's get, I'm going to get just a nice um, yellow. So I'm going to put, oh, that was my blow dryer. <laughs> um, just do a clear wash over this. By putting a clear wash on a passage, it um, just sort of wakes up the surface and makes it so that the paint smooths, uh, flows a little bit better. Now because it's clear, I can go back up in there and kind of smudge it around a little, wiping it up so it's not super wet. Now I'm going to grab my yellow and start at the top, right at the top, and I'm going to let it flow down my passage of wet paint. Now I'm going to grab less paint, not going to grab any more paint, but I'm going to clean my brush off, wipe it a little bit, 
and then continue dragging that puddle down. Wipe it off, clean it, and now I'm dragging down almost nothing. Okay, that's how you get a passage of gradation. Okay, now what I can do is when that's dry, I can flip it over and do another wash going this way and let that sort of gradate down that way, which is what I did over here. I did this peachy color, well first I did the pink this way, and I let it go down to nothing, and then I flipped it over and did yellow, and I went this way to let those colors sort of blend that way after it dried. All right? So, um, where was I going? Okay. So there's that. Broken color is a technique that we're going to use on this little painting today of um, our Hampy Boy. And to do that, I have a couple of colors here mixed up already. You always want to mix up your colors first that you're going to be using for your broken color. So I'm going to use, let's use some more of that phthalo green. And again, you start at the top, rinse my brush off, dry it off, grab my purple, and I'm going to let those colors just sort of mix. Okay, I still have my puddle. Wipe my brush off, grab some phthalo green. Wipe my brush off. Let's grab some yellow. Still dragging my puddle down. Kind of mixes with that. A little bit of phthalo green. Um, what you might notice too is that the consistency of these things, these colors, have about the exact same amount of water in each of these batches. If one of these colors was really super thick and dark with hardly any water and the other one was super runny, it would create a different effect on here. All right, so if you have an area like that and you sprinkle a little bit of salt on it, we all probably tried this in first grade, <laughs> but you just let that dry and the salt will absorb um, the pigment in that and the water in that area, leaving a little snowflake effect. Okay. So we might do that on our painting today. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this here. I'm not going to do any more of this. Definitely, oh, I was going to show you how to do darks. I, I want to encourage you to just, this is not very expensive paper either. Practice these washes. This is just the artist tape that I used, and I did peel it off of this yesterday, and it peeled off just beautifully. Um, so I practice these at your own leisure. They're so relaxing and enjoyable. Um, yeah, there's, you'll, you'll have fun with them. Okay, so doing a dark area. I like to build up my darks over a few layers. Um, so let's take one of these that I've already done. I'm going to take this phthalo green. And what I've just mixed up down here, which I don't think you can see very well. I took, I actually took indigo and burnt sienna. And I just did a really bad thing. I didn't rinse my brush off before going into another color. But you definitely want to make sure you always do that. All right, so let's, I'm taking some of this color. Even though it's dark, my brush is still really loaded. Starting at the top, let's cover over this phthalo green. Dragging that puddle down. Dark is difficult to do in watercolors because it can look overworked. So you wanna really try to keep it fresh and clean. Get down to the bottom. Because it's dark, there's less water. You won't have as much of a puddle when you get down to the bottom. Cleaning my brush off, dry it off quickly and then right along the edge, suck up that puddle. Okay, that's all there is to that. And I think that's fairly dark. I could always go over it later and do um, another wash just to really darken it. So that's that, that's all, that's all I'm gonna do with that. Um, let's get going into this. I'm gonna clean my palette off here real quick. I love this about watercolor, it's so easy. All right, so with that, I don't know if you can see that, I just took my sponge and just kind of wiped everything. Sponges are great, but they don't absorb as much like paper towels, so I, I wish I had my paper towels, but I don't. So every now and then I just pick it up and squeeze it back into my cup. Um, okay, so here we go. Oh, look at that, I get just as messy in, wa in watercolors. All right, so now this is a fairly elaborate painting it's, it's kind of large, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this in layers. And when I have a picture like this, and I've drawn him on here, but I've also added a little bit of watercolor, so I'm, in my mind I'm thinking about telling a story. What is the story of a little hampy boy? Uh, what is it I want, really want to say? And I thought it'd be adorable to have him in this shell in water. And it almost looks like he just landed. So I'm, I, ha I drew some water down underneath him like that. Okay. So now uh, my first thoughts are, 
okay, how do I take this apart working from lightest to darkest? And if you can kind of see on here, um, I have the image of the little hamster. And I know that there are passages in here that are going to be just clean white on his face. And so I don't want to paint those. What I am going to do, though, to begin with, is I'm going to take clear water and paint over the whole thing, just clear. But before I do that, I know that I'm going to have to do like a nice cream color layer over the whole thing, except in places where I want it the whitest. I don't use masking. Some people do. I don't have any issues with it. I just don't prefer it. So before I get going then with my clear, uh, this is going to be a problem. Let's see. You can kind of see that. All right. I'm getting a nice big puddle of yellow over here. How can I do this so that you can see that better? Okay. Um, all right. So that to me, I think is a pretty good puddle and I'm choosing cream. Most of the paintings I do, I do a sort of a cream undertone. Just it, it has that old world feel, which I like. Okay. So big clear wash, big decisions. You can kind of see that. Maybe there's a little bit of a glare. The only change I made to this, um, image, if you guys also, some of you have told me that you're drawing this and you're going to go along with me. The only change I made to the little drawing here is I gave him a teeny little hand sticking out. All right. So while that's still wet, I'm not worried about going all the way to the edge. I'm going to grab this cream color. It's, it's just cad yellow. Kind of let that flow down just like that. Just, it's a huge wash. We're just doing a really big wash. <laughs> let that do its thing. And this is 300 pound. I, th I don't remember if I mentioned that. I like 300 pound, especially on these bigger pictures where I know I'm going to be using a lot of water. All right. Now I'm going to take a clean dry brush just to pull out some places, kind of erasing the paint. I got it a little bit wet. Erasing the paint where I want it whiter. It's fine. Maybe the top of the shell it has more brighter. So you can just erase a little bit. I wouldn't aggravate the surface too much though. That. Okay, there we go. So now I know that I'm going to want sort of a night sky back here. So this is going to kind of, I mean, maybe not night, but I do want this sort of to be sky with some blues. So I always work from the background and work my way to the foreground. I want this to dry, so you're going to hear some noise here. I'm going to run the blow dryer real quick. It doesn't have to be super dry because I want, um, I still want it to flow in here, but I didn't want the blue going onto the hamster very much. So I'm going to wipe up most of this yellow puddle that I had down here. Clean that up. Seems like this might be the well that I used to do my mixing in today because you can see it better. So let's grab some ultramarine blue. I'm still using this great big, what is this? Size one inch Utrecht uh, synthetic, whatever that is. Okay, ultramarine blue. Maybe I'll just add a touch of burnt sienna because it kind of neutralizes the blue. Makes it a, a, have a little bit more of um, just a natural color to it that I like. All right, keeping this closer to him. Again, it's just a nice puddle, dragging that down. I like this flat brush too because I can kind of get in there and work it around the details like that. So while I'm working on that, I'm going to let that puddle sit there and not dry out. And I'm going to work this around his little figure, dragging that puddle down. You don't want it to start to dry on you. So there we go. Okay, that took care of that contour. I'm dragging this puddle, kind of letting this puddle flow over this way. Working around his face. Really cute. 
In case you're new to me, this little hamster has been a good buddy. He just passed away. It's very really sad. Oh, get back here. Okay, <laughs> my picture. My computer goes into hibernation. Now, along this water here, I, there are parts that I'm going to want a little bit lighter too. So I'm going to kind of leave some of those for now. A little bit lighter down there. Just using my brush on an angle. All right. That's satisfactory to me right now. I think that's fine. Okay. And that's about as far as I'm going to take that the background right now. So I'm going to get my um, this brush. You know, I'm going to blow dry some of this a little bit real quick. I'll come back in through here with more detail and stuff as I work on the water. Um, all right, so let's start in some of these layers. I want to do a little bit of the shell and the hamster in here. So I'm going to use, I don't know if you can see that, a little bit of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, which gives me kind of that nice brown gray color there. Okay, so this is just sort of a neutral gray, and I'm going to paint this just where I see the darker colors on the hamster and the shell. Leaving the passages white or light that are supposed to be light on the hamster. Everything else is going to be, I'm going to hold this a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. Hope that works. And I'm also looking at my computer screen too to see the image a little better. Again, just moving that puddle. Really, that's all I'm doing. Whether it's a square or a larger wash, it's ultimately the, the whole thing about watercolor paintings, just moving the puddle around. So letting these puddles sit up here for just a minute. that down and right around his eye. I'll come back through later and get his eye nice and dark. And around his eye over here and under his ear. Quickly this this goes right into light back here so I don't want to get that too dark. Wiping this off. I want a softer edge here. All right, so that'll work for that. I'm gonna add just a little bit more blue to that um, gray mixture to get some of this. If you add blue to that, it'll make it like that gray shadow on his fur. So a little hamster boy had passed away um, a few weeks ago, it was very sad. We had him a few years, he's a very good boy. So that's fine for now. I'm going to take the same color and paint it over the passages of the shell where I see that darker neutral tone color in the shadows. I want to make sure I don't cover over that, whoops, that light. But I hope that you can see so far that none of this has been very, um, I don't know, intimidating or I'm going to grab a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson into this mixture just to play with some of that broken color while I'm doing this. A little more alizarin. Let's make it pretty. A little bit of blue. 
You see how those colors are mixing? How do I know how much, or enough water? Um, Jacqueline, just practice, that's a great question. How much, she says, how much water do I know to use? Um, you're gonna have to learn like in practice over time because these are things that if you want a certain color, you have to just sort of experiment to say, okay, if I add this much water, that color is going to turn this color or that color. And do those scales, or the, I call them scales, the washes, practice the washes. Buy some paper that is not terribly expensive and just do a bunch of practice washes. That way you, it becomes more automatic when you're painting too. You start to know, okay, well if I have this much water on my brush, um, it'll do this effect. So I'm dragging my puddle this way in this area where I'm doing this wash. And I want a clean, sharp edge there where it turns. I'm also, um, just like in oil painting, I'm keeping my brush strokes horizontal in this passage to show the form of the shell because you can see the lines on the shell going this way. So I'm allowing my brush strokes to define that form taking a little bit of alizarin. Now here, I'm gonna flip my whole paper over and do a gradation wash. So I'm taking a little bit of alizarin, a little bit of yellow, and gonna do a darker down here, and then clean my brush off, add a little bit more water, and just drag uh, this down to nothing over here because I really want the light hitting the top of the shell over there. So that's how you can get that transition from dark to light. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna do that again over here on this side. Adding more water to the top of the shell and then a little darker as it comes down this side of the shell and then a lot darker as we come, come down here into the shadow. Oh, running out of puddle. You always wanna make sure you have enough puddle mixed up before you start a wash. <laughs> not good to not have that. Okay, nice dark, let's do so, Sorry, just had a call. <laughs> Start, wipe my brush off, suck the puddle up, just like we did on our washes. Same thing with over here. I'll do, we're gonna do a gradation wash here. Dark, and then it goes to light. Clean my brush off. There. Okay, same thing done here, a little bit. This is the water underneath the shell, so I want to paint that in a little bit bluer. All right, now, okay, so that to me, that's satisfactory for the first layer of, hold on, sorry. I, did, I forgot this wash here. The first layer of the painting. The light's hitting that like that. All right, so now I'm gonna come back through I, my middle tones are pretty much where they need to go. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. Yes, um, just so you know, all of these videos, even if you can't watch them right away, they stay on Facebook. Um, also, I have another camera here going. I'm gonna be editing this and I should have it, I'm thinking about putting it up on YouTube. Um, not entirely sure, but that's, that's where that's going. All right, so uh, let me get a very soft mixture of this gray, this blue and brown that I have here. And I want to just put that down very lightly for the fur on his back. All right. And let's get some more of this yellowy tone over here. Okay. So before I go much further into the hamster and the shell, I want to add a little bit more detail in the, the water. <laughs> okay, thanks. Good to see you, Jean-Marie. Um, so I'm mixing ultramarine blue, if you can see this. Ultramarine blue, let's get that nice and get some information in there. Sorry, the, 
Kids are all home today from school. <laughs> oh, thank you, Linda. All right. So let's, uh, well, I'm making this up, so I'm just gonna put in a little bit of water information in here. Just a little, just to suggest. So I don't mind that some of these puddles here are gonna be a little darker, but I just don't want them to be distracting. So I'm just gonna soften up some of those just a little. <laughs> Let's get some of these concentric rings that looks like he's landed. I'm gonna kind of play with what I have going there. And then a little back in here. I'll come back through here with some whites and so forth to make some splashes. This is what I love about watercolor painting. It's so peaceful. <laughs> Three dots in the upper right hand corner up here. Touch them and you can save the video on Facebook. Oh, I, that's great. Thank you, Tony. I, I will advise people of that. So then as things go off in the distance, they get less and less and less. So we'll just make our brush strokes smaller and smaller. Just let those fade away. But I do want to suggest the story, so we'll just kind of do that. Um, I get asked actually a lot when, when people are working from their imagination and um, they want to do some more, a little bit of the fantasy type art. How do you do sparkles? <laughs> I'm going to show you how. Why is the style called Victorian? Um, well, it's called Victorian because the technique and methods of laying down the paint are more in keeping with the traditional Victorian masters. Today, uh, watercolor painting has more of a... Um, you still work in layers and you still work in a lot of the same philosophy and ideas, but it's more um, allowing the colors to mix and it's, it's a free-flowing... I think that today's method of watercolor painting tends to cause a lot more frustration for people because they look at it and say, oh, it's, it's just so spontaneous and, and I don't think that I could kind of have the mental wherewithal to, you know, how, how would I know what to put and where to put and basically I know when I tried to do it like that it ended up looking like a jumbled muddied mess. And I wanted to paint watercolor pictures that looked like what it is I wanted them to look like. And so, um, and when I learned this, it, to me, it just clicked. And I thought, I, I want to paint like those, the Victorian masters. So I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to go into now some more of the detail around Hampy Boy. And I have, um, I don't, let's try, I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush. This one looks okay. Let's try this. This is a size five. I don't think that's a five. <laughs> Your Walmart variety. <laughs> so anyway, let's get, I'm going to get the hamster done. I want to do some of this more interesting detail work. So I'm going to grab some burnt sienna. And I don't want very much paint, or excuse me, water in here. Can you see, can you see what I'm doing? Okay, right here. Yeah, this is fine. And ultramarine blue. I think he's pretty much just a neutral gray. I know this isn't a very colorful painting, but I thought, you know, just for teaching techniques on washes, this might be helpful that way. All right, little brush. This is pretty much dry, so I can rest my hand on it. I'm gonna start at the top and just start working on some of the detail in here. And I'm gonna hold my hand down like this so you can see a little bit better. Leaving gray what's already been done. You have very little opportunity to erase with watercolors. There are people who can do it. Um, and, and you can just kind of rub out a little if you make a mistake, but not too terribly much. It just, it, it, um, it can, again, it can upset the surface of the paper and end up looking, you know, scratched out. <laughs> so using this. I'm still doing the tiniest little washes, if you can if you can see that up close. And I don't think it's necessary that you see my palette so much at this point, since I'm just scooping into that 
dark mixture that I have. So I'm going to hold this up close so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just looking at, I'm looking at my computer here where the picture is. And I'm looking to see, it, again, not relying so much on my drawing because like I said at the beginning, I drew it very, very lightly so that it was less about seeing all the pencil marks and more about the painting. And I'll come back through later and do the little, I say inking, pen and inking, but it's not technically since I'm not going to use the Higgins black ink today. So little teeny tiny washes. Looking at his structures, anatomical structure in there. And up and around. Can you hear those birds outside my window? I love that. I love hearing nature so close. starting to come together. It was my daughter's hamster. She um, she had a little lemonade stand and raised the money to buy him. He came into our life a couple years ago and uh, just recently passed away so I'm gonna give her this painting and she's really excited for it. Now the little um, the little whiskers right around his nose have uh, they're like in little lines. So I'm just going to do those as little dots. Hmm. Going around his eye very carefully. This is one of the reasons why I think this sort of painting is so relaxing. If you're at home and you can just put on your music and just do this. Or no music and just listen. I think that's nice. I'm going around his eye because I'm going to come back over that very carefully. And um, just uh, because there's little tiny highlights in his eyes, so I want to address those. And I'm thinking too all the time about the direction of his fur and allowing the brush to suggest the fur in there. Around his ear. Some of the detail of the drawing that got lost, it's okay because I'll come back through with the inking and I'll pull out that information a little bit. I'll also uh, come back through with a little bit of white, Chinese white, and I'll do the um, the whiskers. I'm taking a little bit of blue here for the background and just bringing it up a little bit closer to his face because the drawing was off over there a little bit. So that's fine. Okay, coming around this way. I want a little darker by his ears, so I'm popping that in a little darker like that. And every now and then I just take my finger and just dab it. If I work on one section, I want to work on the section next to it. Um, you can, uh, Jacqueline, it, just waiting for different areas to dry. You can wait for things to dry. If you don't and you want them to bleed together, then that's what they'll do. Um, so if you if you want to have, you know, every everything stay put and its own little integrity, then you need to, yes, let them dry. But, in, you know, I mean, you've seen me with my blow dryer. You can just pull it out and, and blow dry it real quick. But what I, I mean, what I do in a situation where there's places where I don't want it to have a choppy look, I will um, wet the whole paper and then try to work it all as a whole at the same time. And, uh, as much as possible so that it doesn't have that choppy look. And in fact, I would also work very small until you get very comfortable with the medium because by doing larger pictures, it, it can be very 
aggravating um, with the the paint drying and so forth. Okay, so as you can see, I'm still just using smaller and smaller brush strokes to define the form there. All right, and then a little bit <clears throat> down and around here for his lighter color fur. And remember too, I'm gonna, um, I'm reminding myself actually, <laughs> I'm gonna come back through here with the inking, which isn't really inking, but um, just to create a little bit more of that storytelling. Oh, and Jean Marie had asked, um, how does this separate itself from regular watercolor? I, it's, it's more of an illustration too. And, <clears throat> excuse me, so I add some, um, of the inking texture and information to that as well. Okay, so for now, I'm okay with where that's going. And then um, I'm gonna add, I'm just gonna make a very soft little pink mixture here for his little feet. Just same tiny brush. little teeny tiny washes. Drag the wash down. Wipe my brush off and suck the wash puddle up. There. Okay, so that's that. Um, all right, let me get the eye done. And to do that, I'm taking just pure ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. A little more blue than brown. And there's already sort of a gray wash on his eye, so I'm just gonna leave that. I'm gonna blow this picture up on my computer. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now drawing the, you can see I'm just gonna draw around the shape of the eye. Big round eyes. And it goes back into the fur like that. I hope my hand's not in the way of the camera, sorry. <laughs> and around, down like that. And then we have a little bit of the darker fur. And then his other eye, I'll just do real quick. Oh. Okay, that's fine. Now, I'm um, just going to take a part where I see the darkest darks on his eye. And I, I don't care to use ivory black for this since it just has more of a naturalistic feel if I keep things um, a little bit more um, you know, natural. I'm just taking some of this darker here and just softening around the eye a little bit. <laughs> he sure was cute. Alright, so these I'm just taking now and I'm gonna pull out while I have this dark on my brush, just some of these darker pieces of hair defining around his eyes. Like that. And I wanna come down here and pull out his nose a little more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And wonderful watercolors, yeah. <clears throat> Let's get some of these over here. All right, so there, 
that is okay. It's not done because I'm going to come back through here with a little bit more detail. But what I want to do now is to pull out a little bit more of the shadows and textures in the shell. So just mixing up a little bit darker brown and some blues. I'll pull those out and get some really pretty Victoria. Er, what am I doing? Um, <laughs> broken color under here. Right under him. Like that. And I want this to sort of have a clearer surface quality over it than um, I don't want to lose those greens that I have there. So I'm just doing a clear wash over that. And you can see I let some of that just sort of blur. Put some blue in there. I want more of that beautiful alizarin crimson. Too much. I don't want it to be too stripey. Starting to look like a shell. And let's just darken this passage down in here. There we go. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I'm just going to take, while I have it here, and draw in some of these sharper lines to define the form like that. Keeping my brush strokes, again, cleaning it off, just letting them define the form, wiping it off, going up into clear. I don't mind that it's a little bit imperfect because it is a shell and it has that texture surface quality that I think is interesting. A little bit over here. Let's get that punch that dark a little bit more so. So what what you've seen here <clears throat> is that I started out with um, I did just the, of course the drawing first and then I did a light middle tone over where things needed to go. And then, um, <clears throat> sorry, I, I'm talking too much. <laughs> and then um, just built it up, built up layers. All right, now I think I'm going to take one of these teeny little ones like this and start to get in a little bit more of the details. I am going to take a bigger one to mix the puddle. Nice dark burnt sienna. Ultramarine blue. <clears throat> I should have brought water. That would have been good. <laughs> All right, cleaning that off, setting this down. Back to my teeny brush. I'm gonna come in here and just do some more detail. And this is my kind of what I do for inking. So if you can see that, um, just keeping it really. Little dot dot dots like that. So, and of course, I will share this picture on um, Facebook when I'm done so you'll be able to see it a little bit more up close. Oh, that's too bright. Kind of killing that effect. Let's get some of these down in here. Because if I just had those darks over here, it would look off balance. So I am going to bring this over a little bit more this way, too. 
And then I do have some, a little bit, how dark is that? Vertical marks. I'll show the growth rings on the shell a little bit, just to suggest that. Like that, just a few. <laughs> Get some of these lines under here. I like how these are able to help direct and define the form. And so I'm going to pull out a little bit more of those down here and down here. I don't think I'll put much of a line over the top of it because I don't feel that it's necessary. Then I will go over here. <clears throat> just to help define this form to show that it continues on. And I want that darker around his fingers. Okay, so now I'm going to, with the same brush, oh, <laughs> thank you, um, I'm going to come back through here now and do whatever little inking I need to do around the little hamster here. So let me just set this down a little bit and come back in and pull out these details. He's got some whiskers here. But the white whiskers, I am going to put in, but I'll put them in with um, some white. I have just some white over here. It's acrylic. <clears throat> I'm losing my picture. Here we go. But again, um, this is, uh, you know, without using the pen and ink, dipping it in the, the thing, um, I'll, I'll have to do that. If, on the online academy, I will be doing more of uh, just pen and inking and um, drawing. I'll show you how I got to this step before I started today, you know, drawing the image on the canvas or the paper. and um, I'll talk more about that with the online art academy, which if you're just joining, we're going to start it up next month. And um, currently we're figuring out the platform on which to do that. And I just can't wait to get started on that. I love going into the basics and beginning and we're going to start with drawing 101. So it'll just be very um, humble beginnings. We're going to start there and then work our way up doing more Victorian watercolors like this and so forth. I am going to kind of define his ears a little bit here with the pen, the brush. I call it a pen tip, but it's so tiny, a little teeny tiny. It says it's a 10 over 0. And then I'm going to flick like this for some of the hairs that, just to suggest that his hair is kind of getting blown. It's really cute. <laughs> oh my gosh, watercolor painting is so delightful. I just love it. And a little bit over here. Makes me smile. Sorry, I know you can't see because my hand's in the way, but all right, so there's that. Oh, little tiny eyelash. That's cute. <laughs> I'll show you up close when I share the picture. Um, let's get some of these around this eye over here. 
My dark puddle wants to dry up very quickly because there's hardly any water in here. I spent a lot of time with this little buddy. I'd put him in his little hamster ball and turn him loose in my studio. And he'd just busy himself. And then sometimes I'd put him on my table while it was working. and He liked to go behind my computer because it was warm back there. They like to be warm. And sweet little hamster. Just clean these up a little bit more. So again, I'm my my brush strokes are just defining the form of the way that the hair grows around his face. Okay, like that. And then up and around his ear. But I yeah, I have plans to do more. I I actually had several pictures that I was going to choose from for today's project. And um, I thought it'd be interesting to share that I was gonna. I was thinking about landscapes, Victorian watercolor landscapes. Um, I had some pictures from Ireland that I thought maybe I would do, but I settled on this one because I thought it'd be simple enough um, to kind of get going with in that way. So if you um, are interested in the Renaissance Academy, put your email down below, and we'll keep you notified. If you put your email in the comment section, and I can um, give you a notification when the Online Art Academy is up and running. But uh, yeah, we also have, we're just, uh, we just released the Still Life video, getting great feedback on that. Thank you guys. If, if any of you are watching who's purchased it and are enjoying from it, we do all kinds of stuff here at Renaissance. Have a good time. I'm doing it. Just saw that his fur needed a little bit of help up there. The, tr the trouble is, is knowing when to stop, you know, um, that can be a trick, but for now I know that there needs to be a little bit more definition in here. around his paw. Alright, and then some down his back. Pulling this down. Now I'm going to take and just kind of blur some of these because I thought that they were a little too choppy. And I wanted it to feel more like fur. <laughs> and I can, you've seen me do this a little bit too, sometimes with my finger. Just to, it just sort of dabs up the smallest trace of water. And that's what I'm doing with that. I'm just going to take a little bit more of this violet color, alizarin crimson, and, um, I want this right back behind him here. Get that blur going up. Taking a little bit bigger brush. There we go. <laughs> All right. Now, he's almost done. I do want to, here, while I have this teeny little brush, I will pull out a little bit darker blue and just pull in some of these splashes and things as we see them down here. I'm gonna let those just sit as a nice dark puddle. Get some more darker blue. Darker blue with the, um, 
Burnt Sienna, and Ultramarine Blue. And letting them just sort of blur together like that. I think that it needed a little bit of weight underneath it. So that's that was helpful to add that little bit darker at the base of the picture. Okay, so I now almost done. I'm going to take and add a little bit of white in places. And to do that, I just I have Chinese white, but I find that it doesn't it doesn't have the impact that I'm looking for, and it kind of dries darker gray. <laughs> so I am taking some just some white. Here. Um, before I get into his whiskers, I'm just going to dab a little bit down here for the splashes. And you can see by doing that, just a little like that. Let's give him a little bit of wetness on this shell. It'll shine like that. You can kind of see where I'm going with that. I don't mind a little bit of that. I think that's kind of fun. Just a little. And then you can add just little round little sparkles. Somebody had asked about sparkles too. So I'll show you just one over here real quick. Um, you make a cross. This is too thick and heavy. Sort of a cross. Like this. And then, okay, so you have the cross. And then I X the middle. Very soft. And then I put a dot right in the middle for that. If you can kind of see that, that's how I do sparkles. Okay, and you can do them different sizes. I do little X's. I'll do little dot dots, little dit dit around the sparkles. In um in that little Rover Random story, the uh, the little doggy um, watercolors I showed at the beginning. There's a lot of sparkles because it's a fairy tale story. So, in my own mind, I think that these sparkles kind of lend to that feeling of fantasy. So, those are some sparkles. Okay. So, that's that. Now, I'm going to go back into his eye with some of this white. And I'll add just a little bit of a highlight right there to make it look glossy and one no I don't want one on the other eye <laughs> um, now I'm gonna do his whiskers around his face and that should be about it very delicate you probably won't be able to see much of this but I will share it later Got a few that come up like this. Oops. Just wipe it off real quick if you make a mistake. And I am going to add some just to highlight the hairs around his face and forehead. Cute. Oop. 
and around his ear. Get his messy hair blowing. And I like this on the top too because it sort of adds that it, it looks like fur, um, that illusion. Okay, now one more thing before I go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I just want to take a little bit. I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to take a little bit of this darker blue. Move like that. And then I'm going to paint over the whole thing. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not going to. Um, taking a little bit of that. I just want to do right along the edge of him a little bit darker here because you know with watercolor you always go from the lightest to the darkest and I really want this passage here to pop so with this kind of painting that's the last thing you do a little bit of dark Again, just working with my puddle. Drain that puddle, just let it kind of go off. Let that sort of fade into not much. You can use sort of that broken color effect as your wash just sort of fades into nothingness there. But I think that that little passage of dark there was important to help really set off the, the highlight on his back and his head. Let's do a little bit underneath. to tie it all together. And I think that that's a wrap. I'm gonna sign it. You just sign it. I always sign my watercolors with a pencil. that's that. So I will share a picture of this on um, Facebook and uh, let me talk to you here. I'll actually look at you guys for a sec. <laughs> um, so anyway, that was that. I hope that it didn't look too complicated. Victorian watercolor is very relaxing and very enjoyable. Thank you so much guys. I appreciate your kind comments and support. I will get to them here um, in just a few minutes or maybe later today because I do have some errands to run. But um, anyway, so just as a reminder, if you're interested in our um, online art academy, put your email down below. If you're not already a member of the Renaissance community, we will keep you notified. We're hoping to get this up and running next month. And um, take a look at everything else we're doing. We've got some great videos. We just released The Still Life. Um, that's getting a lot of great feedback from all over the world. Very excited about that as well as the portrait and all of our plein air paintings coming up into plein air season and stay tuned we're going to be running some offers on all of our plein air videos so there's a lot to look forward to and um yeah it's very exciting stuff uh renaissance creative arts is the website and just um take a look thank you for joining me and um yeah enjoy this do some more practice if you want and um yeah we'll do some more all right thanks guys Bye bye